An interesting one now. Overpass will be our second map for Cloud9 versus Navi. Interestingly enough, not only have Cloud9 impressed us on Mirage, a map we thought here on the panel, YNK and Freiburg joining me, that this would be favoring Na'Vi, but now the odds get even more stacked against Cloud9. They have a win under their belt, but upon review, it seems this is a map that they rarely take battle within. In fact, within 2017, they've played just three games and beaten just one team. Freiburg. Yeah, <laughs> you know I knew it that? was coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they played it three times 2017. The only team that they've beaten is us, 16-14, down in DreamHack Masters Las Vegas. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Feels no, but bad. I mean, um, it's a map that uh, Sinan rarely plays. Um, the last time they played it was in the ECS finals uh, for a few weeks ago in, yeah. uh, in London against uh, FaZe, and they lost with 16-5. So, Considering the, the BO3, where you only can remove one map prior to the picks, I mm. think that Navi has actually done a great job on uh, picking maps because they know that C9, they don't like to play train, uh, sorry, Nuke, especially since uh, even Navi beat uh, um, G2 yesterday on Nuke. Of course, they don't want to play it, so they have yeah. to leave overpass in the map pool, so Navi instantly picking overpass. So, yeah, this, this in my mind, should be a very one sided map. Uh, but considering yeah. how it went on Mirage, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure, there's a, there's a chance of a bit of a surprise. But, Yanka, what I'd like you to do with, with the limited time we have is to talk about Na'Vi and why they are such a force to be reckoned with on Overpass. It's been one of the few maps that they've actually been very strong on, even with the new lineup. Uh, alongside Mirage and Train, those are their two more played maps, but Overpass is the one where they maybe even had the most success yeah. and, and looked the strongest with that city side aggression. Guardian, you know, playing well on this map in general. The, the si silver lining here for Cloud9 may be the fact that they're starting on the CT side and could probably predict this map coming uh, in the in the pool if they're going to leave it in and might, might have done a good job of preparing how are they going to distribute aggression on that CT side because we know that yeah. they're going to go for it. Navi as well, known to be an emotional team. The, the map, the Mirage was lost mostly because of them making mistakes and, and beating themselves to an extent, mm -hmm. allowing Cloud9 to exploit those openings. So uh, Cloud9, if they get momentum early, perhaps could run away with a 2-0, but this is where Navi needs to show that they have the mental fortitude to basically recover yeah. uh, after a difficult map one loss and take this to train. An awful lot on the line, and we'll bring up the odds as well, see exactly how the edge has been given from Betway. And yeah, Cloud9 are given mm -hmm. a considerable margin. In fact, it looks like it's just kind of swapped over after yeah. the performance on the first map. Uh, the closing thoughts are going to be gifted to you here, Freiburg. If you think of storylines, Na'Vi, ESL1 New York, they want to go ahead and prove that that was not just smoke and mirrors. The same can be said for Cloud9 over in Sao Paulo. Yeah, um, I mean, definitely both teams. This is on the line here for for um, for Cloud9 and yeah. Navi. Just having this... A player uh, to watch, would I, that's what I want to steal from you. A player to watch in this game would probably be Guardian, considering mm. the performance they had in Game 1. If he can transition that, transition that over to Overpass here on Game 2, I think that uh, Navi would take it to train. I'm going to go with Stewie, simply because in the few times we saw Cloud9 playing the map, on the T side, he was the space creator and the playmaker. A lot of their game was revolving around him, sending him alone to try and take control of toilets, draw attention to himself, basically, while the other team was ready to explode on the other side of the map. So he needs to be able to buy enough time and draw enough attention to himself without dying so that the rest of the team can try and make something happen. Make something happen is what we're going to do now here for ESL Cologne 2017. Our second map of our first semi-final. Will we get a third? Will it be Train or will Cloud9 continue to do better than they ever have before on this very stage? The crowd are ready and your casters are too. Anders and Semler, take it away. Thank you very much, Alex. Yes, we most certainly are. Map 2 coming up now for semi-finals. Cloud9 and Na'Vi. This is it, Anders. Like I was saying before the break, Cloud9, they've picked up the first map. The first piece of the puzzle is there for this win and to get into the grand finals now. They just need to do the job again here on Overpass. Na'Vi's pick. Na'Vi's turf. Although, Yanko is good to point out that this is also a playground for Stewie. Hey, he wasn't quite there yet. It's going to be a fight on Long already. An automatic against Kadoodle. Stacked up three players here at Long. And Na'Vi sacrificed one, figuring that out. How do they come out on top, Cloud9, in that fight? Now in the middle, Stewie looking, he sees the shadow, he can't quite pre-fire it. And it's that simple, it's gonna take him down, swapping out for the USP instead of the Tech-9. I'm not quite sure about that choice. It's gonna be automatic to take the refrag, so they're still in a man lead here. Cloud9, I would say, fall back now. Yeah. Just cover the bomb sites. All right, Stewie, you gotta make the plays, but sometimes... Sometimes it's a little bit too risky to be hanging around way out here and allowing Navi just a chance to get back into the game. 
So automatic, you can count on him. He finds his frag after all. And it will be a man advantage for Cloud9. Navi with plenty of time left on this clock, 45 seconds. Are starting to rotate that bomb over towards Long. Or was Edward just taking a quick peek? Are they just going to try and group up together? That could be the move. They've got both the smokes for the stairwell and the bank of the A-bomb site, so those could be very good grenades, but that doesn't change the fact that they actually need to get the kills on the two players holding the bomb site, and that's Skadoodle and Automatic. They can still buy time, they can still get headshots, so now we have only done part of the job by putting down these smokes. Now comes the really hard part. With 18 seconds, flashbang right in Flamey's eyes. That's not how you want to get started. The rotation is starting to come in here. The smokes are still a little bit up. Edward trying to look for the kill. Shroud with one. A second headshot, a third headshot. Oh my god! Shroud eliminating Navi from the map. Three stunning headshots. That's how it's done if you're from Canada, apparently. Three stunning headshots and a gloriously timed flashbang to allow for them to push through that smoke as well. Brilliant work there to recover Cloud9 when they finally figured out where Navi went. And Navi, they did everything right. They got the smokes down. They grouped up as a unit. They were just looking to trade kills, but there's sometimes there's no handling Shroud. The power of that uh, NA pistol. Looks like Navi aren't just gonna bend so easily. They've invested into four smokes, two flashbangs, no armor and no pistols. So that means they just want the bomb down. It's all gonna come down and see if Cloud9 are gonna fall back. That's what they were hoping for on Navi's side. And Shroud just says no. Another three kills for him, making it six in the game so far. And looking for a couple with a pistol as well. Shroud and there's the Eco Ace coming out. Eight kills in two rounds. <laughs> and listen, this is actually, a, I think this is actually a very good gamble for Navi. It's not uncommon that if you see that many smokes come in from Cloud9's point of view, you think, why fight? They probably have Tech9s. Mm -hmm. Let's not do this. Let's just wait. They didn't have Tech9s. They wanted to do the same thing as they did on the first map, on Mirage, where they just ran in to get the bomb down. Didn't work. Not this time. You're right. Not this time. And just a monstrous amount of money being made by Shroud. The rest of his teammates were at 3,300. He was already sitting at 6,000 in the bank. So Scott's pretty much got his AWP on lock now. Stewie playing with his food. Yep, second kill for him with the UMP. He wants some of those SMGs kills. He's going to be charging straight in, looking for the fight. And he assassinates Guardian. Now he's got a Tech 9 to play with as well. Okay then, okay, Ska gets a kill, and now, well, Cloud9. That's a very difficult round, or couple of rounds for Na'Vi to deal with, when you're just not able to get any kills, nothing going your way, and now you have to go into the big buy round that may determine the first half here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I hope Matt sees that. That's some coordination. How did they accomplish that? Maybe there is hope for humanity after all. I was starting to doubt that. They only have the one kill that Simple got them earlier. I know there were a lot of disappointed Navi fans in the first map. We'll see if they can come back and cheer for their team in the second. Uh -oh. Here Stewie goes down, but Automatic with the double return of the Fermas. And instantly falls back. Actually, he's going to try and continue on the grenade in as well. Guardian there to save it. That could have been a triple. Thinking maybe that he couldn't back out past the fountain. There was Simple holding the angle. But now this has thrown everything out of the whack here for Navi. Three SMGs, though, for Cloud9, and a whole lot of utility got used up in the first few seconds of this round. They have a single smoke grenade left to buy time with here on Shroud. And he's over towards that B site. If they can catch Seized, this would be key. If they decide to go aggressive, it doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. They've got a great... This is actually a powerful setup. It, if there's a Molotov here, it's not going to be great. But look at this. If you take down nothing, Shroud is going to come essentially pre-firing around the corner with the MP7. So you're not going to have much time to re react. We might actually just see this now. This could be a very interesting test of this kind of setup. I haven't seen this very often, and obviously because a lot of grenades are thrown in here. But in this round, they don't really have any. And, well, close range with the UMP. Won't be tested this time. He's just pissed. Now there's an AK picked up. The rest of Navi splitting up as well, not going as a duo through Monster. It's simple, looking for the shot, and he's going to donate the bomb. Nothing. Another clean kill, leaving Guardian alone. 20 seconds left in the round just isn't enough time for him to work with. Instead, he's going to elect to save the AWP. It's a question of whether he makes that out of here or not. Now, nothing. He's on the hunt. Oh, they know where he is. Missing one shot, missing a second. They're going to get a third strike. He will take down nothing. And... Is there anyone close enough? 
Looks like he was close in that uh, connector, but um, not going to make his way up the ladder. Instead, it's four and zero in favor of Cloud9 winning the first map, and second map is uh, off to a good start from them. Deep breath here on the Navi side. They've shown us they have the strength of character to sort of ride out this kind of pressure, mm -hmm. so they need to remind themselves of that as well. Still early days on overpass. Yes, and it's not like Navi aren't experienced with this map either. Considering the bloodbath that happened yesterday versus G2. They've managed to figure out a little bit of their play here on the map. The main thing is, though, that Cloud9 now have more information to go off of as well. Judging by Navi's recent form and their performance yesterday versus the Frenchman. That may be coming into, the, into things here just a little bit for Cloud9. But it is going to be Guardian playing aggressive, trying to make the play happen here with the AWP. And we'll see if he gets rewarded. They're not giving him any openings. It's all the way over by the restrooms instead. Edward picking up the one kill. Guardian taking down nothing. Ah. Almost getting the second flick. It looked like he was on it. But Shroud will get one. They've stolen that M4. That was in the hands of Stewie, I believe. So three versus four. The weapon still heavily favoring Cloud9 here. Not easy for Navi to make it through in this round. No, this isn't a done deal at all. If they could find one more kill here, Navi, that would be big. But what they need to do right now, Navi, with 40 seconds left on the clock, they need to start gathering up. And well, sure enough, automatic. He sees that smoke goes down. He tries to take advantage of it. That's not going to be good enough. Two-man advantage now for Navi. They have a rifle and an AWP to work with as well. But Skadoodle is alive on the site. Can he hit the shot? Point blank. Yes, he can. Delivers. 50 HP left for him. It's all about him buying time now for the rotation. Shroud is running up for the B site. Oh my god, that flashbang actually flashed the flanker up. No idea how. C still gets the kill. It almost looked like Skadoodle had actually come out on top there. What a flick coming in. Shroud getting one of the headshot. He's tapping away, Shroud! Can he do it again? He's up to 11 kills and looking for number 12. Are you kidding me, Shroud? Four kills. Can anyone take this man down? He's got 12 and 0. He's a one-man army. I didn't know, Anders, that this was going to turn into a story of redemption for Shroud. What are we even watching anymore? What fantastic play from Cloud9. Navi Sh are going to be besides themselves. Shroud on land in 2017. <laughs> Not that long ago, I would have said, yeah, maybe. More as like a side cast. More as like a secondary option to your automatics and your Stewie on this particular team. I have definitely been wrong on that, especially in this game. If this is the moment, he's always had it in him, Anders. He's always had it in him. But if this is the moment, he finally unlocks it. Goes Super Saiyan on us. Unbelievable. But it's not over yet. This is still Navi's map. They've been in chaotic situations before. They've been down and score before. And with their tournament life on the line now, with a spot in the finals on the line, Navi, they're definitely not going to go down without a fight. And so they had the money to go for the buy here. The AWP picked up by Guardian. Just a little light on the nades, but I mean, they have everything required here for a B hit if that's what they want to go for. Instead, they were looking for aggression from Cloud9, which is just not going to be the case. Not in mid, at least. Cloud9 did play for map control towards Sewers, however. It's a nice three-man peek towards Long there. If you're holding on the other side with an AWP, it's hard to know which target you have to fire against. And there's a flashbang in your face as well, so just taking that control. I, think, I feel like we're long overdue for a triple boost on this map. I won't lie. It's been too, way too long, in fact. Maybe we can call one in from Navi's point of view. They were they the, the original ones. team to do it. Yep, they were the ones. They've certainly got everyone in position. Oh, if that happens now, how sick would it be? 45 seconds. Now they've gone past the point where you need to do it already with the first player in Edward, so they're just going to walk onto the site here. Spray comes in. Stewie with the one. Miraculous refract from Flamey. This is really important right now for Navi. They need to make it through. Cloud9 are on the bomb site. These anti flashes are so good from Cloud9, though. They just keep stopping Navi cold, but that was the last flash. Now it's a Molotov and a smoke on Skadoodle, and the smokes are raining in for Navi. It's do or die time here for Navi. They need to hit the headshots coming straight onto the site. But Skadoodle, he's got the line on the bomb site. There's three players here, ready and waiting. And there is no time, no room for error here for Navi. Trading kills 
left and right. Four seconds left in the round, and Shroud just needs to run. Simple noses, is he gonna get him? No! Shroud makes it around the corner, and he keeps his perfect streak alive. Disgusted. If you're simple right now, you were so close. What a flick from Skadoodle as well. <laughs> Just look at this kill on C's. That's devastating. And he realizes, he knows he has to run for the smoke to hunt him, and it's, it still is not enough. 6-0 and oh here. The rise of Cloud9 is what we're witnessing. Smoke to cancel the Molotov. Edward is angry right now, charging right onto the B-bomb side, but he's gonna get shot down by Shroud. None other than, finally, they managed to take him out in a round, and Guardian with a spray dropping nothing, and automatic in a world of trouble. He goes down. This may have been the answer for Na'Vi. Change the pace, up the aggression, and get that bomb plant down. Now Stewie gonna come charging right through behind the flashback, going for the spray. He could have got the double. And the doodle gets one, and that's all they can get off of. Navi finally winning a round, and the crowd can't believe it. Can we get any closer than this, Anders? Just non-stop fighting for 45 seconds straight? Yes, please. More action like this. They thrive in the chaos. Deep breath. And let's see if Navi can chain rounds together, because that's what's going to have to happen here. They want to keep this run going. Cloud9, because these rounds have been so close, they don't have any bank. They've spent everything on two rifles, an AWP, and a couple of pistols. 14 0 oh, 1 for Shroud. That's insanity. Oh, so stupid, isn't it? How is that even possible? Well, let's see, Ska. If everybody were to hit a shot, now would be the time. They're gearing up to go through mid here, Navi. Oh. The long take. Skadoodle can hold this angle because he's still got backup in Stewie behind him. Otherwise, he could easily get flanked, but you can see Stewie's making these jumps all the time that makes sure that Scar is not going to get shot down from the other side. And if he sees anyone coming up from the connector, he puts down the smoke and lets Skadoodle escape. So there's like a really good plan in order here. The only problem is this side of the restrooms. Edward, he can sneak in to get this kill. Yeah, Skadoodle, you're just sitting on one angle. Okay, oh. there's the smoke, and they've decided enough is enough. We've waited until the 50-second mark. And eventually, Na'Vi, they claim long and mid. They have everything they need now to push onto the A site. I guess they're done dealing with Shroud. Leave Shroud at B. Don't go to B. That's Shroud's domain. Skadoodle did not have a very good first map. It was really, really tough on him, and they still managed to win it. He seems to be doing better on this one to see what he can do with the AWP. They've already spotted him out. Can they get the grenades in on him? There's one kill on Edward, falling back in line, taking down Guardian. Finally, they drop him, but Stewie is still in play, and he almost gets the double, leaving Simple on just 25 health. Flash this world with 17 seconds. Cloud9, are they really going to crush the Na'Vi economy? Indeed, they will. Nothing to take care of it. Seven to one. Na'Vi, Na'Vi's reset. Oh, no. Reset with no bomb plant. Which means, what do you do if you're Na'Vi? Well, on three players, there's still just a little bit. Two players, really, Guardian and Flamey. It's going to be a bitter pill here, Anders, but this has to be the half by here for Na'Vi if they want any chance at all at getting Guardian that AWP. Flamey could drop it for him in the next round. Now I know why they make those things out of plastic and air, so that when the fans hit themselves in the head with them, they, they, no one gets hurt. <laughs> it's a good thing. Oh, the hard reset here, and now it's just going to be the straight run and gun, and Skadoodle, point blank, annihilate, seized. Anti-eco round here. We won't have another anti-eco ace, at least not for Shroud. Sky will have to be one mobile opper if he wants to make that happen for himself right now, and he is back up onto the A site. They're trying to be a bit more fast in a round like this. Can't blame them. It sort of worked on the B-bomb side, though, the one time that they managed it, although it was close, and I could have sworn Stewie could have got those two kills in the in that pit. Oh. Maybe landing a headshot on Stewie, so digging into the Cloud9 economy, at least one rifle has to be re-bought here. Was that through smoke? I think it might have been. Which would be absolutely ideal. Well, there's Scott. One, two, three. Is it going to happen? No, they're down on B. He needs to rotate now to make it uh, to make it happen. Unless, unless, unfortunately for Shroud, he gets overrun. Yeah, but there's plenty of presence on B as well. Boost with just pistols. Doubtful that it would actually do anything after all. 
to see what happens when they turn the corner on the side. Shroud is in position. He's been bought for a couple of rounds here, so maybe maybe it's time for him to pick up a couple of more kills if his team will let him. The Famas will be one of them there. Simple getting a frag. And Shroud now ending up at 16 and 1. Yeah, I like it. Shroud, he decides, you know, I can be generous. I can share. An 8-1 scoreline now. But after that round of eco, they didn't get the bomb plant, but they will have the money to buy. And sure enough, Flamey will be able to drop that AWP over to Guardian. And so now, I think the spotlight really shines on Guardian to make something happen here with the AWP. He's sitting at four kills right now. In the meantime, on Cloud9, Skadoodle has joined Shroud in the double digits at 11. I think they should have gone for a tactical timeout here. Now, B, they need to take a deep breath. They need to get themselves back in this first half. 8-1 is recoverable, but Cloud9 right now are just rolling with it. It's looking so good for them. They are moving in towards restrooms while three are holding long. That's a rare occurrence. Oh, I like this a lot, though, from Navi. This is a change. It's been a lot of late round plays coming in here from Navi. Now within a minute, ten, with minute 10 left, and they're already right at the entrance to A site. Cloud9 will have no idea. They've been trained to expect otherwise from Navi so far on this map. Sure enough, surprise. What? They don't get the kill, a missed opportunity. Uh -oh. oh no. Just a little bump in the road. Let's see if it's gonna derail the whole vehicle here for Navi. Still a five on five for the retake here, Cloud9. Been given a second chance to actually do something in this round, and there's nothing of one kill on Guardian. Simple, good job on him, but Automatic is there with the refrag. Still a three on four. This was their big chance. Navi, they surely can't give it up now. Seized will get one. Skadoodle left alive, and 11 health, he picks up the kill. Edward's hiding in the corner, and this is almost going to be 100%. He will take down Skadoodle, following up, taking down Shroud. And Automatic, one versus two, and he's going to have to back up. Navi, a sigh of relief, surely, for every fan watching. That could have got very bad indeed. We might be quick enough to die, that is. So they still lose every single man with Cloud9. Navi, 8-2. It's the beginning of something and might actually be a very good beginning given the fact that Cloud9, they can only buy rifles on two of their players. Well, the last time Shroud had to force a Deagle, he got two kills and his team won the round. Fair point. And this we can totally carry that over from Barrage. Right? Well, this is an even more Deagle-heavy map, although Shroud does go down immediately. That was an interesting effect. The cast the curse is still strong, man, still strong. Yeah, good opening frag. Just get some distance, get the grenades in as well. Seized goes down. Automatic helping out nothing in that weird fight. Man, they took hardly any damage at all there. Yeah. Nade onto Flamey, just a little bit of smattering of damage of the shrapnel. But they weren't, one key thing is that nothing still has to use the 5-7. They did not recover that UMP off of Seized. So quick work there from Flamey to make sure to deny that part of the map to Cloud9. And so they can still set up for the B execute here in Avi, and it's looking like that's what they've got in their minds to do. Minute left on this clock. And Cloud9 pretty much split up here. Nothing in a very aggressive position. Automatic, though, gets that smoke down. They're going to go charging right through it. This may play right into their hands. They run right through, threading the needle, but nothing finds the first headshot on Edward. That smoke doing a world of work. Close range. That 5-7 is absolutely lethal. 35 seconds left. Now, B, they've completely ground to a halt. Where's the push? The grenades are up. Now is the time to go. Automatic will go down. Guardian somehow finding that kill. And now it's back to a three on three. The crowd is loving it right now. Flamey looking for any opening that he can with the tech nine. Trying to get closer to nothing. Who's just taking a bullet to the face. Next in line and alone on the map is Skadoodle. He's going to go down to simple. And now be finding a third round. Finally, something is starting to connect. Finally, Guardian is being put into play. A triple kill that round for him. Up to seven in total, 10 on simple. I'm very curious what happened there with Automatic. Did you notice that? Looking up all of a sudden, that was very weird. I wonder if he didn't think someone was boosted on top of him on the sandbags, if he yeah, was worried maybe. about that. Maybe that was it, and then the timing just worked out impeccably there for Guardian to find the shot. Still, what's important is that Na'Vi have managed to actually chain rounds together here. Putting Cloud9 on pretty much a hard eco. And so now Na'Vi can begin their slow, boa constrictor style play. 
Just taking their time, getting map control, working their way out onto the map. Look at this. Nothing, nearly getting taken out without even seeing where he got shot from. Yeah, this is the beginning of something big for Na'Vi. Cloud9, they might actually think about being the ones to take a tactical time out soonish. Mm -hmm. Break the momentum for the opposing team. Make sure you get the economy back on the roll. Right now, it's all Na'Vi in this round. The thing is that if you're Cloud9 right now, you need to just be thinking, well, we have a lead. <laughs> Skadoodle still finding kills somehow. Now he has the AK to play with. He desperately wishes that that was Guardian that he managed to get that kill on. But unfortunately for him, Guardian is all the way up on the A site. Bomb getting planted now. And we're set with the countdown. Seemed a bit silly for Flamey. I'm quite sure that he heard Skadoodle drop down. Mm -hmm. So um, he probably did know that he was coming from that direction. But um, small mistakes. Skadoodle going to try and save the AK here. And I do believe we have a tactical time actually being called by, um, by Cloud9 after the round. So I think that's really a, a solid idea. Like, that's two rounds in a row for Navi, about to be a third. Uh, no reason to give them, give them that much of a runway. Mm -hmm. Just let them, let them cool off a bit and let your guys maybe try and get back into it. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a bit of an awkward spot here with the economy for the next round for yeah. uh, Cloud9 as well. Although Ska will be able to buy his AWP. And it's, armor, yeah. It's floating at 4,300 pretty much for everybody else on the team. Yeah, but you could drop the AK for one at least, so... If he wants to. I'd kind of be shocked if they don't buy in this round Cloud9 just because they've done it so much. <laughs> and excitement is all around. I love these crowd shots. 13th round. Three tactical timeouts left for Cloud9. And I'm, I'm quite glad that they managed to, to do it in this one. I think that's a, that's a good idea. What a difference it makes that Skadoodle is, uh, is playing as well as he is here. 14 and 6 for him. We were talking about Shroud a lot, but I mean, he's just... Skadoodle is two kills behind Shroud. Yeah, he had a terrible first map on Mirage. Well, yeah, really hard for him. Wasn't able to really get the AWP into play. Wasn't really able to have too much of an impact. But Overpass clearly a little bit more his jam. He's got that op now with the Kevlar, sure enough. And we'll see where he decides to position himself. And it's looking like it's going to be that long fight. Curious to see if Shroud, or if Shroud will lead them into a quick take on Sewers here for Cloud9. Hoping to get a little bit of map control, but instead it's looking like Cloud9 are going to play very passively this round. Let's go Cloud9 is what I'm hearing from the audience. 8-4. Skadoodle is there with the AWP. He's got that long range. It looks like they are ready to throw a bit of flashbang, and maybe they're going to try for a similar peak. We'll see how this works out. Pretty hard to flash him here, but he will make it back. Guardian there instead to take down Skadoodle. That's a perfect opening for Na'Vi. That's such a tough decision for Skadoodle. You're trying to go off a of feel, going for the repeak. Oh, look at this. Down by BC. He's just about to get... A little bit of a gift and a flashbang. I was thinking more of the fact that they were running through the smoke, but that's an interesting setup. Now, not only do they get that kill, they see that no one else is there. They might be able to guess what's coming next to push on to the A-bomb site. It's a great shot from Simple to take down nothing. Now we need, they know they need to move quick, otherwise reinforcements is going to be coming. Edward gets a kill, Flamey with a headshot, taking down Automatic. And now it's on Shroud. No chance at all in the B-bomb site. That's a quick move from Na'Vi. As soon as they lose Seized, bam, they're on the A-bomb site. No delay at all. But what's really concerning here is that, yes, okay, Shroud and Skadoodle, they're, they're leading the way in terms of kills. But again, Stewie just not having any kind of an impact when they push onto the site. He's still low single digits on the frags. And we a lot of focus is on Stewie as a playmaker for Cloud9, and if they can't count on him to get kills, he, the frustration is going to mount, especially because he's the one calling the shots for the team as well. But there was an opportunity right there to shut down that push on long and perhaps stumble Na'Vi a little bit. Instead, he just got run over by Edward. Five kills only right now on Stewie. It's very true. I think Stewie if he's going to come alive on this map, we'll probably be doing most of his work on the T side. Mm. So as well, long as automatic. Yeah, exactly right. They they just they have a little bit more freedom there. Mm. Easier for them maybe to find the fights instead of here where they could be avoided or they could just be in the wrong spot. 
I think eight rounds is pretty good for, for Cloud9. I mean, even if it finishes eight, seven, I think they hit, they still stand a pretty good chance. But um, now we, they were looking I don't, completely broken in the beginning of this map. Now they definitely don't. Yeah, now they've got some confidence. They figured it out. Guardian is starting to hit some shots, opening things up for his team. And well, now it's nothing at long. He does have support from Rastrum. Supposed to duel and automatic are there. They try to flash their way through, and there will be one kill for automatic. Quickly traded, however, and nothing if he goes for the repeat. This could get ugly for him. Looks like he's going to decide to back off and play it safe. Try and set up a defense on the A site. Stewie is still alive at restrooms. Sees this lurking his way towards the B bomb site. If he can clear it all out, then the bomb is going to be planted real quicker, though. Shroud was waiting for him. P215 hand. Not quite enough to take him down, so easy enough round here for the rest of it. Only question is, can they find that gun that Edward dropped somewhere? Maybe that would be interesting to them. They might have taken the time to throw it on the roof or something. We'll see. Sure enough, Stewie's drifting back over here. Yeah, that's possible. That's actually something that uh, do see happen on a fairly regular basis. So, 8-6 the scoreline. Quite, uh, quite an interesting turn of events after that kind of a beginning. And it looks like Navi were wise in this case. Young Stu hasn't found a rifle. Looking for the shot instead, and well, Flamey spotted him too, so that's a little bit unfortunate for Stewie. Going for the pre-fire, and the Jiggle Peaks trying to bait out a shot. Flamey, he's in a bit of hot water here, but eventually Stewie will commit to the fight, and it's not going to work for him in the end. Thank you. Wouldn't have known otherwise. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, just a, it's just a white sign, Anders, right? You know, so if it's, if it's white, unless there's something on it, it could be any. Any side. Photoshop material. Someone should do that. Bring like a big, big green sign, and then you know all the Photoshop artists <laughs> can just Photoshop whatever they want into it. Well, let's go. Fifteenth round is coming up here. The last of the half, the first half of the second map here, and it's going to be really interesting. Right now, I feel like we've got a really tense game on our hands. It's impossible to tell who's going to make a way with it. Look like Cloud9 were about to sweep their way right into our grand finals, but now we have said. No way. We're here to fight. This is our map, and we are going to take this to map three. Certainly, they're making a good case for it right now. This long take is so good. The Molotov to the tree, the flashbangs to follow up, then the massive peak with the AWP behind. It's very hard to stop if you're just one person holding up here. Yeah, moving together as a unit. Navi, as that three, and this is what you kind of need to do if you're going to have that death ball approach to things. You get the three together, move together, so you can trade kills if you run into the op at long or set up in restrooms. And in the meantime, you still have map control towards B, and so you can rotate around. Simple looking for the wall bang on nothing. Does find quite a bit of damage, and an automatic out of nowhere. Simple just had a heart attack. Where did that guy come from? He sprayed the whole magazine, and then automatic just pops up. <laughs> That's so annoying. Edward now sliding into the corner past the smoke. Oh my god, this is a massive play from Edward. They're gonna have no idea. Stewie's right there, but he still wins the fight! How does he know? Stewie to maybe save Cloud9 in this round. Nothing with the kill. Stewie again coming in and taking down Flamey, leaving Seize in a one versus four here. Almost no chance at all. If Stewie doesn't get that kill, there's the triple. Very well deserved, bringing up to eight total. Nine six in the first half, favoring Cloud9. They get the last round at least. And now it's anybody's game. Whoever wins the pistol is going to have a bit of a lead, but it won't be a sure thing. We'll see how it all plays out in the second half. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back.
Second half of the second map, Navi and Cloud9. Let's get the show on the road. What a game it is. 9 6 in favor of the American squad, but Navi are still holding on. If they can win this pistol in the second half on the CT side, we've got a lot going on. This is going to be exciting. Yeah, that's where it turns into an out and out brawl, Anders, where it just goes the distance. Oh, you start to think about a 30 map. Oh, that's ice cold. UKCS. <laughs> oh, is this magic? Wait, what? Edward, just driving that truck? Well, was well, it a UK truck or a US truck? Because then it would be Guardian driving, right? Now, if you look at the odds here, definitely Cloud9 looking good at the moment for the series. Now V, people are questioning them a little bit, you can tell, as they do evolve. Now the grenades are raining in. Cloud9 want to hit this B bomb site. Edward and Simple with a couple of refrags. Edward again with a headshot. Finally, they take him down. Flame, he gets one, and he gets a second as well. Shutting down Skadoodle. That's how it's done. Solid defense on the B-bomb side. Now we read that perfectly. And the flashes, Anders, the flashes. If you're completely blind while your teammates are dying around you, that's a hopeless affair. But when Flamey hits clean shots like this, well, the second one was just a little bit spray spray, but still gets the job done eventually. What's important is that we did get it. The pistol round for Navi. Ideally, we're looking at them tying it up nine to nine, and then we're getting into a real scrappy fight here on the second map of this semi. This is Navi's map, and so we'll have to see, have they prepared a CT side that is capable of dealing with Cloud9's T side? This sets up Guardian, though, for that AWP fairly quickly. The thing is, is though, Guardian, he doesn't really play to prioritize the op the same way. He counts on his teammates to save the money, to make the money, and then drop it for him, because he always goes for, like, the rifle if he can get it. He's quite a capable rifle player, so maybe it's worth it. Cloud9 have certainly invested into this round, including the scout on Skadoodle. Mm -hmm. It's quite an interesting play. The one thing here is that Cloud9, what we saw in the first map, they were the team that were able to actually win eco rounds, right? They would force up with pistols, go for half buys, right? And Navi succumbed to those a couple of times. So I'm just a little worried here for Navi on the CT side whether or not they will let that happen again. Because I mean, you've got some terrifying pistol players here on Cloud9 side. Very slow approach here from Cloud9. You can sort of really feel the tension right now. They, they want to find just one opening. They know that if they can turn this half around right now, get the rifles out of the hands of Navi, break their economy, mm -hmm. they could be in the grand finals in just a couple of rounds. There's a lot still to come, and with Flamey opening up and taking down nothing, it gets just a bit more difficult. Guardian up here with the M4. No need to risk it all that much. Just playing for the retake, and if they overcommit, maybe that could be enough. Grenade is going to rain in. Doesn't really do much of anything. And Stroud still playing by the truck. 
Trying to ring out some shots with the Tech-9. He's going to go down. Stewie gets one. Can't really follow it up. Automatic with a good kill, but he's completely boxed in right here, and he's going to be dropped. So Na'Vi with a very comfortable round, only losing two players. That's kind of acceptable. Well, this would be the time for some star player to wake up here on Na'Vi. Flamey picking up nearly all the kills in that round. But, you know, the fun thing is, like, yes, okay, great. Why so easy? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of meme is that? <laughs> Unbelievable. Nine to eight. You're right. Flavy could be one of the players to step up and save Navi from all of this madness. He's currently got 14 kills. One behind Simple, mm -hmm. two behind Shroud and Skadoodle that are currently tied. So, yeah, maybe Flamey and Simple, that duo, will be the one to really make it all the way here. A lot of pistols, no armor. I don't think this is going to work out too well for Cloud9. They're already being shut down there with the bomb being dropped as well. Smooth work for Flamey. Yeah, that's oh. control. That's just some patience. Another three kills for Flamey. More importantly, keeping that M4 alive, not getting overwhelmed. And so Cloud9, they have not wasted much time so far at the beginning of this second half, Anders. An explosive pistol round strategy onto the B site. And then the two following rounds, just a lot of run and gun, getting it over with quick. They want those rifles. It's Skadoodle, no AWP here for Skadoodle. But I, it used to be that we would think, oh no, no op for Scott, what's he gonna be able to do? But he has really stepped up his rifle game in recent times as well. So this is a powerful buy here for Cloud9. And again, looking for the Stewart's play. Guardian going for the fake, and he walks right into his death. Automatic. Does not miss the chance. That's a brutal way to lose an opening frag there. The flames obscuring the vision. Automatic just taking the shot right through. I guess you're not getting boosted, Edward. No, they give up on that, apparently. Or well, they couldn't make it work. There are so many boosts that are still possible on this map. That's one of the reasons why it's so interesting. Automatic finding a second shot there, going for the triple. Taking down Seized, finally there's a reply, but... Cloud9 are gonna be very happy that he did all of that work. Edward gets one. He, he was still looking, maybe could have got Skadoodle as well. Perfect work, and they get the smoke down to block off Symbol. As soon as he opens that squeak door, it's all gonna be over. And Cloud9 in their first buy round, now they have some options they have. They could be able to pick up Quite a few here, putting the pressure on Navi. Navi with a single M4 saved on simple. And Cloud9, they shouldn't even bother hunting this. Just leave him be, hold on to your AKs for the next round, find a way off the site. Actually saving this M4 is sort of paramount because Guardian has zero dollars, but everyone else has enough money to buy him. So mm -hmm. drop this weapon for Guardian and then the show will sort of go on if you're on the Navi side. And you see Seize was just saying that, like, play simple, don't die. And he was nodding in game, right? Like, I heard you, don't worry. Actually, I think he was dancing to the music that's over there. There's like a nightclub music going on. <laughs> it's very interesting. Key feature of the map from my point of view. And then he just goes and still takes the fight regardless. I right, simple. You saved your gun for 40 seconds and then you still risk it at the end. Well, okay then. But what a fantastic round from Automatic. The first one, I was like, okay. He got lucky. Flamey made a Kalaris! Shout out to Kalaris. Fantastic caster. He's got the eyebrow raise in slow motion. That's some, real, that's some real swag, isn't it? He is a devilishly handsome caster. Can't really disagree with that. 10 to 9. All right, let's see how this unfolds. There was some Counter-Strike art in the way that Automatic takes the second peek. I'm sure the desk can elaborate on this, but it's the fact that he goes he goes back behind the corner, and the next peek, the, the next peek he takes is a really wide peek. Mm. Very hard to judge if you're coming into the Navi side because you're covering the close angle. So that wide peak as the second kill is... That's hard to deal with. We'll see. AWP on Skadoodle, one on Guardian as well. Only one round of difference. Flashbangs are in. And Guardian not getting any shots through this time. And now he's falling back and looks like Cloud9 are ready to speed it up. They want to close out this map and this game, but Edward getting one. The second kill as well. Guardian close with the AWP and looking for just a bit more. Shroud has got a headshot and it's about time that he stepped it up in the second half as well. Skadoodle jumping on top of the box there. Flash, they can't see a thing. Flamey gets one, but oh, Guardian's going to go down as well. And now it's on Seized here. Can he do anything at all to save it? Indeed, a headshot on Shroud. One kill and that's all it took. Tying it up at 10-10. And now Navi, that's a huge round to be winning. 
electing to use blunt force there, Cloud9. There was nothing subtle about that play. Rush straight onto the site, behind the smokes, behind the nades. The flash is going off in succession, but as soon as there was that gap in the flash, and the flash chain, boom, Edward gets his kill. Guardian as well, as soon as they can see. It's just still amazing the fact that Cloud9 are able to bring it to a 1v1 clutch situation. But Shroud with no utility and just no luck getting caught in the corner there. Very well done, though, however, from Cloud9 and from Navi both. 10 to 10 were tied up, and now Cloud9 have got that decision on their hands. Are they feeling confident in their T side? They don't have the money for a full buy here. This is so good from Edward. It's like right now is when you think that's it, the round is won. Mm -hmm. And it almost spills out of their hands. Like that could have been that could have been so terrifying. That boost up or the jump up from Skadoodle as they're both flashed. That's the best possible scenario for that peak, isn't it? Yeah, that flash. Once they were like, wait, wait, we still have nades to use here. Then it all got back into it. But this is Cloud9 risking it all. And Flamey too. Yeah, just play me going through the smoke. That would be unbelievable. No way. Instead, it's going to be an HE. Nobody there to take the damage, luckily for Cloud9. But Cloud9 ready to just go onto the B site. They're running right into it. Good flashes. Edward holds out Mouse 1 and sprays down 2. He's done the damage. The defense holds for now. Although, as I say, that Stewie cuts him pretty fine. Well, Stroud, he's done it once. Now is his chance to do it again. Not going to be easy by any means, but the one thing is he's got the time as well. He's got the grenades. If you could just get one kill here and isolate the next player, there's a minimal chance that this can work out. He's up against Guardian and Simple though, so odds are stacked against him. Flick comes out, no connection this time. The Molotov, it shouldn't force uh, Simple too much out of position. Can he just pick up the bomb? He's right next to it. Be the peek around the corner. Forces out the shot, now goes for the spray. Shroud hitting one, that's for the double. Next is for the triple, and my god, what a risk. He's jumped down already, he doesn't know it. Shroud goes for the spray, through the smoke. He's down to 19 health, and just 20 seconds left. Does he see the angle? He does. Shroud, out of bullets, goes for the pistol, goes for the shot, and Shroud! Gonna be able to win it! Cloud9 stealing around. A miraculous play once again. You see Simple's face, the double face palm. That says it all right there. It's almost as if the gods wanted to take it away from Shroud when he runs out of bullets, and Guardian's only got a fraction of HP left. Unbelievable from Shroud. What a clutch. 11 to 10, and a hard eco now for Navi. And so Cloud9, they get to feel a little bit better here, although they have to be careful. There is the stack on the B site. Cloud9, they're playing for the map control. They're not rushing anywhere. They're going to take their time and figure things out. See what kind of round Navi are about to throw at them. Whew. All right, now we can breathe, Anders. That's a one in a thousand, ladies and gentlemen. Dad, you can replay that round very many times, and that will almost never be the outcome. Once that AK goes click, you think that's it. <laughs> it does not have the time to continue with this kind of thing. And it wins it anyway. And what's worse is that then he starts missing Glock shots. It's such a clench moment, you're just like, yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about sometimes. That's what it's all about. <sighs> all right. Well, we're being treated to something truly special here. First map was hair raising, the second one, as Cloud9 are five rounds away from making the grand finals at ESL1 Cologne. It's out of control. It's off the rails here. Shroud has got 21 kills and just 10 deaths. Wow. Skadoodle as well, 20 kills. Nothing Stewie and Automatic, although Automatic and Stewie, ever since we did get onto the T side, they've been warming up a bit as well. Let's see how things go. They are going to make good use of their nades here, Cloud9. No reason to save them. Not versus an eco. Just make sure you clear out those angles and you don't give Navi a chance. Bombs going down. Fairly open plan. That's always a bit risky. But with only pistols on the other side, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a cleanup shroud. It looks like he's spraying while just turning his mouse 180, and somehow that's a kill on Simple. Not bad at all. Seized and flamey. Not much to do with it at all. Yeah, especially with Skadoodle. They're, that's pretty much the kill. As soon as they get that kill, boom, they know where they can go to back off and save. Especially want to see Shroud just run as far away as possible. He only has 3 HP right now. But Seized, he's just hoping that somebody gets greedy. And ideally, you just leave nothing behind. Nothing. He's got that UMP automatic. Got to turn around, and the damage is there. What fantastic work from Seize. 
I mean, it's the little things in life, Anders, but just a little bit more damage there for the Cloud9 economy. He seized, he risks nothing. Automatic can't be too happy about that. I mean, every little bit matters, right? Steal a rifle somewhere. Navi, they're being pushed very close to the edge, and they've got a terrible decision to make here. They could have tried to force with very little UMPs and the likes. Instead, I think this is the reasonable choice, you know. But that will also probably put Cloud9 on 13 rounds. I like that. They found, they found the water on the site, or on the map, and they managed to put Cloud9 in the vapor. Funny. Automatic, he nearly hits the flick. But you're right, this is a half by coming in from Navi. Showing some patience here, some fortitude. Not willing to risk it all. And so 12 to 10, full buy for Cloud9, no problems there. And pretty heavy, fo heavy focus over towards that B site right now. There's a Shroud down in Connector though. They have set the trap here, Navi. They want to get revenge on Shroud. Maybe if he was gonna continue, they could have done that. The rest of Navi would have been ready. I mean, as soon as Shroud sees three people in connector, he obviously calls the go towards the V-bomb side. Sees is down, and seems like it's going to be no issue at all for Navi to pick up, uh, or sorry, for Cloud9 to pick up this round, just waiting to walk into the bomb side and realize that no one is there. 13 to 10, most likely, but there will be a cascade right through connector here in just a moment's time. It's all down to timing. If Stewie turns away as that door opens, he's in for a world of hurt. Five players, now four players, simple. He does find the kill on nothing. Yeah, but the really important thing is finding the rifles. There's no way now we're gonna win this round, but if they can steal a rifle, two even, that would be very big news here. It's like if only nothing dies here, this is fine for Cloud9. He had the UMP. Yeah, it's not like the Cloud9 money is uh, sounded great, so yeah, they gotta be careful they don't throw away too much. Guardian, uh, close enough to get a kill, but not laying the headshot. And that will be the round. 13 to 10. It is the calm before the storm as we go into the last part of this second half of the second map. Pause has been called for by Seized. They know it as well. Everyone knows it. Everyone can feel it, especially if you're in that Lancaster Arena. You know it's getting real close now. Who's doing the talking right now? I'm not seeing Andy talking. I'm not seeing Seized really talking. Is this just a breather? No, uh, it looks like a discussion between Guardian and Seized right now, okay. There is an AWP picked up on the Navi side. Just the one, as far as I can tell. So, no double up uh, in effect right now unless they crazy to go for one last minute, which they could do. They could definitely do it. I mean, they, you can even go SCAR 20 on B site if you really want to. Yeah question of money and a question of will. Let's see. It will be the AWP on Guardian. And we're into the thick of things here. Edward with the CZ, it looks like. The three rifles. Wait, where's the gun? Did Edward's gun... F oh, there's the P90. <laughs> it was almost stuck under the truck. He almost couldn't find it. Oh, man. That would have been disgusting. Y yeah, I was worried that it had fallen through the map in some horrible glitch. Um, that would have been a, a real nightmare. Well, we haven't had a good, like, get CS go meme in a while. He finds the P90, takes the kill on Shroud, swaps it out for an AK-47. Maybe the delay inadvertently, the universe helped him out in some strange way. Life is a mystery, Samler. Oh. And now he sets up the one way, if he can, by automatic. Surprise, surprise! Longest spray of his life. That lasted an eternity. But he eventually gets the kill. Back into a four-on-four -four now for Cloud9. And again, automatic, getting a result over there in Source, but Guardian is alive and Flamey as well. And Guardian, he has been hitting shots with that AWP. He's in a prime spot right now to do some damage if Cloud9 decide to push. They've got a good crossfire here, Navi. Everything is on the line for them. Cloud9 are so close to it. Cracking Flamey's skull for a shot. Guardian, one return. Can't get the second, he had the lineup. Just a millisecond more and it would have been there. Now Cloud9 are on the bomb side and Nothing gonna go for the bomb plant here. This is gonna be a very difficult retake. If they even want to try it, see it's wrapping around. Simple, looks like he's just hesitating, so it will be the round here for Cloud9. Simple is trying to do a little bit, but you can already tell that Seize isn't in on the retake, so instead, it will be 14 to 10 here, favoring 
the Cloud9 team. They're two rounds away, ladies and gentlemen, from making the grand finals of ESL1 Cologne. And both of these teams, you know, they've tasted victory and then went into massive slumps where just nothing seemed to work for them. They weren't able to get any results. They weren't able to click. And now here they are, top four in one of the biggest tournaments of the year, hands down. And for one of the biggest and best crowds of the year, hands down. It's a dream for any player to play on the stage at Lanxus. And to make the grand finals, no less. But it's not over yet, Anders. Anything is possible especially in CS. It's all a question of whether Na'Vi can just rally here at the very end. Tactical timeout called by Cloud9 this time. This is a good idea, I think. They've got very many match points left here. Nearly 14, 10. They just need, need a couple more rounds. They have the economy. Na'Vi don't. They've got almost everything lined up. Just, just a matter of keeping their cool, sticking with the plan that's been working in the second half. They've won the last four rounds in a row. So something is going right. The only thing that could maybe spoil it for them would be the nerves, mm -hmm. the extra tension, that energy, and then a little bit of a mistake anywhere. It's the mistake because right, they have such an advantage here in this round as well. Na'Vi will not have all of the nades that they want. They have a single kit picked up right now on Seized. And a second one has picked up, as well as a third. Okay, they're looking actually a little bit better here, Navi. There is a curious difference in the second half between how Navi are on CT side and Cloud9 were. Well, it seems like Navi are a lot more drawn back. They're not even, they're not that much over a long or birthday fighting and sort of trying to trying to put some pressure mm -hmm. on Cloud9. That means the American side have a lot of real estate and a lot of time to set up executes and even just look for kills. Look at how it is right now, Anders. You're right, 100%. They're all the way back as far passive as you can get on CT overpass, when there are so many options for aggression on overpass for the CT players as well, no less. And it stops, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful term that Chad has coined that, that sort of, you know, it's called transitional defense. That has to be put up pretty far up, right? And then you transition back to the next corner and the next and the next. It's a great term to explain something that's fairly fundamental. If you don't put that into play, then yeah, Cloud9 have all the map control on the A side. They're setting up for the smokes. They haven't had to use any grenades to get to this spot. It's a bit too easy for Cloud9 to do these sort of things right now. We have the rotation, though. It looks like simple, kind of dancing around right now, trying to decide, is it B, is it A? Where do I need to be right now to be effective? Still two players alive for Na'Vi on the A side, however. And Edward, he has certainly hit some shots so far this match. We'll see. He's gonna, it's going to be a time to shine. And they line up! Disaster for Cloud9. Perfect play from Guardian. Double spray. He nearly takes Shroud with him. Shroud nearly going down to the fire there, simple with a shot. It's completely unraveled in Shroud. Guardian striking them as they came through, and that's the end of it. That's all you need. Just a guess, just a feeling in his mind that maybe they were clotheslining that wall, and indeed they were. Look at this. Yeah, that's the lesson. Don't as the up. grenades are raining in and the smoke is fading, that's some real Hollywood action. And what's worse is, I mean, what's even better for Guardian, of course, is silenced. He's got the silence on four. They have no idea where they're getting shot from yeah. at that point. They're, I mean, they are lined up, but still, no possible chance to reply. And while that was a perfect hold for Na'Vi, they could not ask for a better situation where a star player is going to step up and deliver a big play like that to get them back into the game. 14 to 11, they stave off defeat Na'Vi for one more round, but it's a full buy coming in for Cloud9. Both of these teams very even right now. It's very close for the American side. They went for that tactical timeout. Try to get their nerves calmed down. They had the execute, they had the map control. One little glitch. And the round was going for Navi instead. Now, in the 26th round, a bit of a jump coming in. On the other side, that's simple in charge of that. Trying to see if anyone was there, and I think he did spot them out. So this execute for Cloud9 is going to be quite tricky. They don't have all the grenades they'd really want, and Cloud9, or sorry, Navi still have a couple left that they can try and hold them back for. 45 seconds. It's all about, yeah, okay, so there's a smoke for upper. Fairly standard stuff. Where's the Molotov? Well, the Molotov's going out to Toxic, because it's going to be Keen Dennis. Annihilated by Stewie, who takes point on this. His team need to follow him up. However, oh, Flame nearly gets the double, but he does the damage. Somehow, through all that, we wind up in another 2v2. How is that possible? It looked like Na'Vi had a great lockdown on this round. Now instead, they 
going to fight to stave off match point here for Cloud9. It is with the bomb down, and almost no utility, but that one smoke is going to go a long ways. Edward and Guardian, this is your time to shine if you want to hold on to it. What a flank coming in from Shroud. He's actually transitioning out of the bomb site, trying to see if he can make the wrap around. The bomb is already ticking for some time. Edward going to throw up one smoke there, trying to see if he can block it out. Now the flashbang is in, nothing. Charging through the fire, shooting through the smoke, taking down Edward. And now Guardian trying to look for the angle. Cloud9, one more kill, and it's going to be match point, and Guardian has to run for it. Cloud9, one single round is all they need. My god. 15 to 11, match and map point. One more round for the grand finals. And a broken economy for Na'Vi, no less, as well, going into it to try and keep it from happening. But what clever stuff, and there it is. The USA chant. The chant was, has begun. That was part of the bingo sheet that's been handed out to everyone here at the arena. I'm glad we got that in. Fifteen eleven. Everyone take a deep breath right here. For sure, Navi will be. What if they got to fight here in the 27th round? No money in the bank. Everyone's on zero dollars. One AWP, one UMP, one for Mars. And one M4 being picked up by Simple in the spawn and a Deagle on Flamey. We're now fighting for overtime. Navi are, yeah. Tournament life on the line. Match point for Cloud9. And Skadoodle, he hasn't had that op. Deciding to see if he can't find a pick. So he's gonna get greedy over here. And they are setting it up and seized. He gets the info and barely dodges the bullet. And so Navi, that's key. Now they know that there's an AWP in play, they can prepare for this. It's a four-man stack on the B-bomb side. And Guardian alone with the AWP on the other side. Think about what a commitment that is. They hear a little bit of noise. Oh, Stewie gets caught. That was Guardian getting that shot from CT Spawn, as you can tell. And actually, that was actually as they were rotating players out of the B-bomb site. So that's a very, very impactful kill. That could have essentially completely loosened up the V-defense if Stewie stays alive and makes noise over there. This is still interesting, though. Although there is a quick rotation possible. Edward, I believe, is holding in Sniper right now. And so he will be able to just rotate. I mean, yeah, the defense here, they are just set, Navi. They are convinced that this is going to be the play for Cloud9. Notice how Flamey was holding that flashbang in his hands. All he has is a deagle, so he's just setting up for a counter flash in case they start to throw grenades in. Mm -hmm. And maybe sees, though, someone else can maybe set up something great for it. Now he's down towards instead. Gonna go down immediately. Simple with one, sees with the next. Navi fighting to stay alive in the tournament. Nothing goes down. It's all on Skadoodle. He's done a good job, he gets, oh, he gets a next as well! How can it be real? Now he's gonna try for the bomb plan with 10 seconds left and Guardian sneaking up right behind him, Skadoodle with the triple Guardian to shut him down and save Navi right at the end. 15-12, ladies and gentlemen, this game won't die and Navi won't either. Well, he's got your vote, that's for sure. And okay. Guardian, I'm just thinking Guardian, he's got flashbacks to the clutch earlier where he barely loses it. He's like, not again. Not again. We will stay alive here. And it is the buy for Navi and the eco for Cloud9. And Cloud9, they, this has got to be insane for them as well. They oh, are no. so close and they're running right in and it is going to be the trade. There's the effect of trades though. Seized is going to get the big double spray, make it a triple. And again, a 1v2. Shroud looking for a gun, and he's just gonna find it, and he has Kevlar as well. Just needs to be able to pick up that bomb, and that's gonna be the difficult part. You have to wonder if Seize is in fact a robot, because the third kill in that spray happens while he's flashed. That's pure instinct, I guess. Just, that's just memory in his mind. He knows how it works. Beautiful, beautiful triple. And the old that close to the L-Bend, they just truck him with the Tech-9. That could have been the round, that could have been the whole series in that one round, if not yeah. for Seized. Guardian is just in the one spot where you do not want to be if you have the AWP. Tech-9, highly mobile, trade it, and now the 1v2. Yeah, let's not count Shroud out. Never that. He is too much of a beast. Did he spot him with that jump? They know the bomb is there. In 40 seconds, trying to make his way up. 
Sees the jumping going on, now moving in a bit closer, going for the tapping, but Edward will take him down. 13 to 15. And the Cloud9 fans are certainly represented here at the Lanxess Arena. Mm -hmm. If we go into overtime here, Anders. God help us all. We have train. Look at the flat, look at how quick that is. That, that white flash could really throw you off. It's just perfect. And now the full buy for both. No AWP in play for Guardian, however. So this is interesting. And for once, Navi going very aggressive top mid. Finally, they're changing it up. The full flash. I don't think the Skadoodle actually saw anybody there. He just jumped across. They wanted the Molotov and it exploded mid-air instead, but they actually wanted that Molotov for the stairwell to try and keep Cloud9 back so that they can take control of everything. And that kind of fails. So I wish Edward would fall back from this position over at the Rock, though. He's so isolated here. Yeah, if ever, exactly. Now's the time to start thinking about it. Do it, Edward, please. But I mean, you have to admire Na'Vi not allowed a single mistake, and they go, they finally move away from the passive play and decide to take the fight to Cloud9. Aggressive CT setups now, that transitional de defense, as you spoke about, look, both angles they can drop back from as soon as they get the info or a pick. Minute left on this clock, and Cloud9 now have to try and move forward, and Edward, he's right on the limit of getting caught in the open. If Stewie peeks now, there's the flash, he's gonna go for it, and Edward fall blind, and there's the opening kill for Stu! Don't say we didn't warn you, Edward. That's definitely very dangerous. One man down, four to go from Cloud9's point of view. Seized. He saved them last time. He can do it again, not this time, Stewie. To drop him instead for the double kill. Now 25 seconds left. It's do or die time here. Five versus three. The grenades are in, but Simple will take one. Down to half HP, he's gonna push for the smoke, turning around for it, he's actually hiding inside of it right now. 15 seconds, comes out, drops Skadoodle, not the second kill though. Automatic will stop the madness, and now it's all on Guardian and Flamey with the bomb down as well. This would be the clutch of a lifetime for these guys. They need this to hold on to the hope, otherwise Cloud9 are gonna make it through. But these after plant positions, Anders, this is perfect for Cloud9. Smoke gonna go down on the bomb, but they've all got rifles on cloud Nine side. They can just spray right through all day long. It's going for the ninja. Is he gonna make it happen? One second left, and yes! The defuse for Navi! Guardian, what a clutch! And we're going the distance, Anders. 30 rounds on the second map. And what a shock for Cloud9. You can be sure that after Stewie gets both opening frags, he's thinking, we've got this on lock. I cannot believe it. 15 to 14, and we are going into the 30th round. It is overtime or bust here. If you're Navi, not going for the kills. Not going for the battles, just straight in the smoke. And obviously Cloud9 was thinking, well, surely that would have been a fake. Surely they will try to bait us out. They're going to go for some duels. None of that stuff happens. At least Cloud9 have weapons. That's the one saving grace here for them. And they have a lot of them and a lot of utility in general. 15-14. They still have everything they need here, Cloud9. They just need to believe. Whereas Na'Vi... Same story. Automatic with the smoke to cancel out the Molotov immediately. They are just going for it. It is going to be automatic taking point. Will he find a shot? There's the peak and there's the shot to open it up. Simple is gone. And again, the entry. And they're just exploding onto the B site. But they line up for Flamey. A disaster. Again, a 1v1. Again, a chaotic situation. Going down to a clutch situation. And now look at what Nothing is doing. He's saying, listen, I have maybe over a decade of playing this game in the back of my mind. I will put all of that to use against you right now to try and see if I can win this one versus one. 16 health less left on Jordan. He's got the double kill. Guardian has got everything going for him. He knows where the bomb is. Nothing. And now it's just a patience game. Guardian. Very careful. So far, not checking behind him. Now he's actually going back. He senses it. This is all timing now, Anders. Who's going to look the right way at the right time? And it's happening! Nothing! He does it and he just stands up! Ice cold!
but for it to happen that way for Guardian. What an unbelievable way to win a one versus one. 16-14, Cloud9 are in the grand finals of ESL1 Cologne 2017. And there we go. They've taken off their clothes. They're putting it all on display. What an amazing team. To go the distance. To win on Mirage, play me, not even looking at them. He's like, he's just like, nope, he is so disgusted right now. And Cloud9 have got to be over the moon. Going to the grand finals, a North American team on European turf on one of the biggest stages in the world. This is it. It is their moment. I'm absolutely blown away. Skadoodle with an amazing second game. Shroud playing on a level that we have almost, that we've never seen on this bigger stage. He turns up and he is a god on overpass. That's unbelievable. Starting the game off with something that looks like 16 and 0 throughout that, at least 12 and 0 at one point. That's the key, man. Shroud, his team were slow to start, but you need those players to step up to create the space to buy time for the cavalry to arrive. And sure enough, Shroud with the clutches at the beginning, the eights as well. He Absolutely. showed up in this semi, Ska showed up in this semi, and then in the second half, automatic Stewie, and of course, nothing gets his moment as well. Yeah, and he had a bit of a tough game actually on the second map. He was struggling a little bit to find all the kills, but some of the rounds he had were really high impact, and I just can't believe it. We are gonna go to the stage with an interview, so please, Paul, take it away for us. Yes, thanks uh, very much, Anders. With uh, Jordan Gilbert, aka Nothing, that was nothing short of miraculous, sir. That, honestly, we haven't seen you guys play like that for a while. You said to me this is a work in progress, but that's got to feel good. That's the best you've played for a while. Yeah, as a team, you know, we're just doing what we feel is right. Credits a lot to Stu, Tim, and Soham. They're really putting together the structure for our team. I'm just trying not to head into retirement too quick, you know, still show up still make some plays for my team and do what they need me to do. Same with Mike and Tyler and everybody. So just, uh, you know, try to stay humble and do their th the right things. You showed us in that last round that you've still got a bit of life in the old dog. Uh, I mean, there's a chance he was looking behind him. There's a chance he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't, so good game to them. He could have easily killed me another time. Navi, Navi's a great team. Talk to me about the clutches, though, because Shroud, I have to say, I wanted to chat to him. He didn't want to talk to me, but he's on fire today. Yeah. Is this the best you've seen him play? Uh, I've seen him play pretty good. I, it's just kind of funny because like we're almost like his stream behind him. We're sitting there like, Mike, peek him. Don't, don't worry about it. Peek that guy. Fuck that guy. Peek that guy. Excuse my language. And he's just out there flying and getting killed. So it's fun because he has it in him. You know, he just when you pull it out of each other, that's that's when we all shine. So you're like basically Twitch chat. We're Twitch chat uh, minus a couple Vax and Kappas. Yeah. It's a good night to end it on. Congratulations, sir. You're in the final. Thank you, baby.
Hey guys, I'm here on the sidelines right now with Patrick on the arena floor. Cloud9 just having grabbed a huge W there over. Patrick, how are you feeling, big guy? Uh, I would say fantastic. The last shot, it felt like ages for me. Just rotation for nothing. I was out of my chair. Right into the grand final for Cloud9. It's right. Definitely riding the wave. It sounds like you've lost your voice. You've been uh, you've been screaming along with the other Cloud9 fans here today. Yeah, screaming yesterday as well. Today, my voice is just fucked up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is a family show. By far, a family show. With that being said, make sure you head over to shop.eslgaming.com. Grab one of these sick Cloud9 jerseys. Support the team. These boys are going the distance. And I'm gonna throw it back to you, Alex. Cloud9 have done something that they desperately suck, seek to do here in Cologne. They, they have picked up the win in Sao Paulo and everyone regarded it as okay. North America are here to stay and then disappeared into what seemed to be an oblivion. But now they rise like a phoenix into the grand finals of ESL1 Cologne versus none other than Na'Vi who are desperate to replicate the success they found in New York. I'm joined by Freiburg and YNK and I mean, what a journey. Two maps, sure. If I said this game's ending in two maps, I don't think Cloud9 would have been at the end of that sentence for you, Yanka. Definitely not, especially with overpass in the pool. You know, we, we were standing here saying that this is the perfect map pool for Navi. Right. They have their three best maps in the pool, and it would be a huge upset if Cloud9 was indeed able to defeat them on these maps. And we did have two close games, but they did manage to pull it off. Great individual play, great uh, teamwork from yeah. the Cloud9 guys as well. And you know, very intense game towards the end on overpass, but that play from nothing was uh, just beautiful. <laughs> oh, the way to end it, one bullet, back of the head. Yeah, lots to be talked about. I know you, you turned to me, Adam, we were watching the kind of closing moments, the ninja diffuses, the weird three-man spray downs into rebuttals. You just said, what is this game? Yeah. Sometimes the best game. ones are chaotic. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a great game, especially in a big arena here, like Lanxess. Yeah. I mean, having that Ninja Diffuse in the 29th round and then finishing off with Flamey almost shutting down uh, Hall of C9, just rushing into B, and then the 101 and nothing just does the, yeah. the perfect play, just walking around the map using his time. And we've, we've definitely got to find a correlation here, right? Now, admittedly, stats don't tell the whole story, but the storyline that's been developing for Cloud9 has been that of the double S, Shroud, Skadoodle, the names that used to be outlined as win conditions and that kind of, that deviated after a, a dip in performance. But I mean, if you look at some of the things he was capable of, he had 14 frags before he died once on this map. And I mean, he truly was clutching left and right. Mike is a god, was a tweet automatic put out. And you can see some of just some of the stuff he was capable of, even a bit of BM there. I mean, he had eight kills in the first two rounds. <laughs> he had eight out of the ten kills for Cloud9. So a great start of, uh, to the game for Shroud. Uh, I think his, he has once again shown in this tournament what he's capable of with some of those clutch rounds. And yeah. he has shown uh, his mechanics as well. Skadoodle had uh, a strong performance too. You know, two of the players who are probably the most criticized uh, in Cloud9 have really stepped it up uh, on overpass here. Yeah, 26 francs for Skadoodle, 26 for Shroud, both top of the scoreboard in the server. So there's definitely, yeah, correlation here. Those two are delivering on firing on all cylinders. Cloud9 pick up that win. Now, what did you make of Nothing saying in that interview there, Adam, that the rest of them, the four players, are just hyping him up? They're being his Twitch chat. They're just sitting there and they're giving him a morale boost every time. Just push him, just push him, just jump. Just give him yeah. that, that morale boost, I guess. I mean, that's that's how a team should work, right? You should always support your team as like helping in the mountain clutching. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, I mean, every player is human, right? Yeah. They're just either like uh, being, uh, having nerves, having like, you don't hear something that maybe p people behind you hear. So, I mean, helping out in situations and even like supporting just uh, mentally or just in game, yeah. whatever, it just helps out the team. And it seems like so, right now, Cloud9 just working wonders as a team. Same, I think yeah. Jordan was probably exaggerating a little yeah, bit because it can yeah. be annoying as hell to just have people shout at you what you're when you're playing a 1v2 or a 1v3. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's obvious that Cloud9 is really in a good mood in this tournament, that they feel like the, the results that they've had recently uh, speak for yeah. themselves, that they can compete with the best here. And you, know, you wonder if Navi uh, are still struggling you know, to overcome some of the, not internal struggles, but the how this team is in a very uh, emotional state, yeah. right? Losing a close game uh, on Mirage, it seems like some of it did bleed over into overpass, you know, in those clutch rounds that yeah. Shroud did win. That's because at times some of the Navi players are not playing it optimally. They go sure. for an extra peak where they, where they shouldn't. We remember that uh, clutch that he had in the second half, the 1v2 against Simple yeah. Guardian. 
know, it's always in hindsight you wonder why did Simple push him, but he had this, he had great timing while the smoke was dissipating. I just think he probably missed his spray a little bit, yeah. that he should have gotten that kill. But you know, you had a couple of rounds like that where uh, Cloud9 did bring it back from nothing almost. And in the end, in such a close game, that's what gave them the edge. Those small errors indeed. But Cloud9 take the cake to get to that grand final. And happy birthday, Yanko. You have indeed got a delivery to be made. <laughs> 25 today. I was just explaining a pie to my face. Here it comes, yep. <laughs> it's like IEM style. Ooh, 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 ooh. You, you wouldn't do that, Jake. Oh, Never. beautiful. Thank you, brother. Happy birthday, man. 25, and he's talking about Counter Strike. Wouldn't have it any other way. Maybe I would. Yeah, I don't know. It's not really like I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, amazing two years in a row, of course. Yeah. Being at Cologne, this time I actually do get something. Dude, so that looks good. Nice. What, what's, it, what's it like, Jason? You have to shout. He, he's the expert on the cakes. Just give us a nod. I'm surprised they let me bring it out here. It's pretty good. Yeah? Uh, it's even gotten the number of uh, events you've attended, apparently, as well. Does uh, it? Word on the street is that you've done about 30 events uh, on this adventure of Counter-Strike you've taken on. Started in the observer room, strapped to the desk, <laughs> and now we've managed to peel him away, and he gets to dress up all fancy and talk about his favorite video game. So a big, big thank you to Yanko. I'm sure direct all of your love towards him as well on social media on his special day. 25 years ago, your life began, and now you get to talk to me about games. How's it feel? Awesome. I wouldn't yeah. have it any other way, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yes, he's feeling great. Cloud9 are feeling great. And just the closing thoughts on Na'Vi as you get to go and de de devolve and ingest that cake. Um, I want to talk then Freiburg, Na'Vi. Natas Vincere. This surely, I mean, not now, but maybe in two weeks, could this be a positive note for them in terms of progress? For sure. I mean, coming into this tournament, none of us here really believed in Na'Vi, right? I mean, they've had a rough couple of months behind them. Yeah. Um, so I think they really came here and they should see, they, sh they should just take the positive things out of this tournament mm. leading into the major, which is kind of like the highlight of the summer, really, for, for a team like Na'Vi. They should just take all the, all, the, all the good stuff, all the games they've won and what they have progressed as a team in this tournament. Yeah. And hopefully they can actually lead them to uh, even a top eight or top four at the major as well. Yeah, that's just around the corner. But lots for them to scrub over and prepare for. Cloud9, they've got a game they have to prepare for for tomorrow. The crowd will be exhilarated to know that Cloud9 are going to be on that grand final stage tomorrow. They get another chance to meet the Lanxess Arena. And so do the teams coming up next. It feels very scary. A match that is very fast becoming a classic in Counter-Strike. FaZe take on SK when we come back from the break. The Pay Safeguard post-match breakdown.